Hello, everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we'll be doing a box office breakdown for this past weekend as we have most of the new releases and releases in their second weekend box office uh, data that's available. But before going into that, please be sure to smash the like button or light up that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey. It does mean a lot. Also, check me out over at ombreviews.com as the official website for the channel where you can find links to various other things and also a streaming schedule for the summer of 2021. Anyway, let's go ahead now and dive into the actual uh, box office itself because we actually can officially make an announcement that A Quiet Place Part 2 is now officially the first film during the pandemic era to reach $100 million at the box office. This is something that I've talked about the last couple weeks, saying that it could be Godzilla vs. Kong, and I will say that Warner Brothers has not yet released how much money that film has made domestically for this past weekend at least last time I checked and so that film is still stuck at 99.1 million dollars domestically so there's definitely still a chance that it could cross the 100 million dollar uh, number but it is not quite there yet a quiet place part two though costs significantly less than Godzilla vs. Kong and also had a much better opening weekend and also a much long a much higher long-term gross especially when you consider that Godzilla vs. Kong it's taken them what six or seven weeks to get to 99 million whereas a quiet place two is only really in its third weekend or so and is already reached $100 million plus dollars at the domestic box office and has also officially reached the realm of profitability, but I'll dive into that in a second. Corella, which is from Disney, is at the number three spot for the year 2021 with $55 million in its domestic uh, first two weeks, which some might say is impressive, but when you look at the actual numbers themselves and the budget and stuff, they still got a long way to go as far as being profitable is concerned. So let's go ahead and dive then into these numbers. So as I said, A Quiet Place Part 2 now reaching $161 million worldwide. Very much putting this film in the profitability territory. However, just like with other films, you do have to take into account that $32 million of that entire international take is from China, of which they will get very little back on. However, it will probably still be able, especially since it's still relatively young in its release, be able to make up any money in other markets and be able to keep its realm of profitability. As far as this past weekend is concerned, A Quiet Place Part 2, in its third week, came in at number one, beating out Warner Brothers' new film, In the Heights, based off of the very successful Broadway musical, of which I had no interest in whatsoever, even when I was living in New York, and I still have no interest in whatsoever. It just seems like nonsense to me and that's just because I'm not a big fan of those music styles and genres also there was a Peter Rabbit sequel that apparently a bunch of people asked for uh, came in at 10 million dollars in its opening weekend not the strongest of starts especially for a film that typically would be coming out during the Easter season trying to take up on the time off that people typically have for Easter, but $10.4 million opening weekend for that. We'll see what kind of drop-off we have next weekend to determine whether or not the film will be profitable or not. The Conjuring, in its second weekend, saw a 58% drop, but is doing well worldwide and, and doing well enough to where it also has been able to uh, break even and is now also in the uh, profitability spot as there are many others that are much more likely going to be guaranteed flops. As I mentioned, within the Heights, we have $11.4 million domestically, only $200,000 internationally. So there very well could still be the case that this movie has not released in the countries it's expected to release in. Obviously, this is also an HBO Max release as well, and so everyone and their mom is going to say, well, you don't know what kind of money it's bringing in for HBO Max with those subscriptions. I, I can just say right now it's probably not going to be enough to make up for the budget of this film which is 55 million dollars and you have to add on to that marketing so probably going to be another flop for Warner Brothers who also just like Disney is not having a very good year 
as far as box office numbers are concerned. Peter Rabbit 2, though, coming in with $68 million internationally, with a lot of its money coming in from the UK. And so this is a film that, hey, who knows? Maybe because of that international mar marketplace, it might be able to actually reach the realm of, of, of profitability. Uh, the actual uh, budget for the film was not as high as other animated films have been, but it still has a little ways to go. The Conjuring uh, Part 3 at this point has now reached $111 million worldwide. Uh, this is also a movie that was not released in China, and so therefore it can expect to keep much of that international take. Raul Cuella has now reached $129 million, which would be pretty impressive. But then you remember that it's a Disney film that should probably be doing a bit better. Um, and obviously they will blame things like the pandemic and theater spaces. But then I will just point them back to a film like A Quiet Place Part 2, which is doing so well that it is, again, being able to make its money back. There's something to be said about not spending crazy amounts of money that you shouldn't be spending on movies that nobody ever asked for and Corella I think would fit that in many different ways and I guess kind of sadly but not so much because this was another one of those sequel remake reboots of Spirit I remember when there was a Spirit animated film that came out years and years ago when I was a kid and I never really got into it but they've made a a follow-up to it called Spirit Untamed. This film is at only $14 million in the international bo uh, international marketplace. And this film, even though it didn't cost a crazy amount of money to actually make, again, production budget of $30 million, meaning with marketing around $45 million total, $14 million ain't going to cut it. So this is a movie that likely will end up having... Uh, lost money and spiral continues to make very very little and i think pretty much the the chances of this film making its money back is very very unlikely which is kind of crazy when you realize it is a 20 million dollar production budget but then again it was a part of a franchise that's been on the downward turn and also i think it really came out during a really bad time of the year i think if this film had waited to come out during october of this year you probably would have seen some better numbers, but again, th that's just what I personally think. All right, going to the website, as I mentioned before, I do have a website. Check it out, ombreviews.com, where you'll find access to the podcast editions of the live shows that I do, among other things, as well, including my streaming schedule, but also there's this box office tracking tab, of which I try to keep up to date at least once a week. And so entering in these new numbers, again, we have In the Heights with $11.6 million worldwide, Peter Rabbit 2 with $68 million, both of them had 55 million for in the heights and 45 million for peter rabbit respectively and those are the numbers 82 and 67.5 million dollars with the actual marketing cost likely in with the amounts that they have been posted or that have been posted so far we're looking at a 75 million dollar loss <laughs> another major loss for warner brothers and a $26 million loss as of this point with Peter Rabbit. But as I said, Peter Rabbit could be doing well enough in other markets where it could eventually make that up. It's only been out one week, and the same could be said also for In the Heights, but I don't really know what audience that was made for because other than people that are fans of musical theater, I can't think of many, and the fact that they're releasing it on HBO Max at the same time means it's going to be that much more easy to pirate, which again is a philosophy that I've never quite understood completely what is pretty cool though is that coming in now with 111 million dollars worldwide is a quiet place part two so now i can officially say uh, i did jump the gun on this several weeks back when i had the production budget incorrectly labeled for this movie but at 111 million dollars uh, actually hold on let me just double check that no sorry i'm jumping the gun at 111 million dollars this is the conjuring part three so as you can see conjuring part three already is now in the profitable territory and so therefore that film is once again continuing to justify why there have been so many films and, and remakes and spin-offs that have been made in its presence and so therefore really not all that surprising here uh here is the the film spirit so as you can see right now it's at negative 36 million best case scenario is that it loses 27 million dollars so not looking good for them 161 million dollars this is one i was talking about before where i messed up the production budget for a quiet place part two so as you can see it is now correctly labeled with the projected marketing this film is now indeed in the black with 5.3 million dollars in actual net gain profit however as i said if you take into account the china number it probably is still in the red technically speaking but based on the fact that it's still making money in other marketplaces where it gets a lot more back and also it will probably sell pretty well on dvd and 4k and blu-ray because it has gotten some pretty good reactions from fans 
it is going to be able to probably make that up. Now, at a $72 million loss, you have Cruella DeVille. So, again, $129 million is actually a lot more than I thought. But right now, at a $72 million loss. And so, it's actually not the worst-case scenario. Right? My worst-case scenario for them was that it would end up around $75 million in losses. But now, it's probably going to fall somewhere between $45 and $60 million loss for Disney. But still, another major financial loss for Disney. They have not had a profitable movie in a very long time, and it's for a couple of different reasons. The main one is they spend way too much money on their production budgets, and two, because they're Disney and they're an evil corporation, and they decided to try and put all of their eggs into the China basket, and it really hasn't been working out for them all that much, especially when you take into account how little money they get back. And then the last one I'll talk about is Spiral. So as I said, now at $31 million, but because of the fact that it has not just made any money at all, and it it costs barely any money at all. It's still best case scenario was expected to lose $7 million. And right now it's at negative 10.8. And so it's hovering right around that mid range number. So it's going to fall probably somewhere between negative seven and negative $10 million. So still a financial loss for spiral, which was kind of surprising because normally horror films with small budgets do pretty well. But I think much of it came to the time of the year, the fact that it's a part of a franchise that has been going downhill for a very long time because they made way too many of them, and a lot of them were not ending up being very good. And even though you have major stars in hit like Chris Rock and others, it was just not enough to bring people to the theaters. And I think that also kind of helps to point to and, and is a shown as a piece of evidence as to how we can now know that movie stars are not enough to sell tickets anymore. You know, having the, the big star, having the big name in a movie is not going to be enough. What people want are good movies and franchises that they want to support that are fun and entertaining. Because remember, people want to escape. They don't want to be preached to. They don't want to have stuff shoved down their faces. And what we're seeing is that the companies that have most embraced those principles seem to be the ones that are actually suffering the most while others who have maybe been in between or not as active as a Disney, for instance, and also not as invested in the foreign marketplace, like places like Disney have been, are actually not doing nearly as bad. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Are you excited that A Quiet Place Part 2 is indeed the first film in pandemic history <laughs> to be able to cross the $100 million domestic number. Again, a huge milestone for A Quiet Place Part 2. I'm sure a lot of people will be running with that narrative that cover the box office, while Godzilla vs. Kong almost got there and might actually be there by the end of today if Warner Brothers decides to post those numbers. But until they do, they're not quite there yet. And even if they do cross it, there's no way they're getting close to the $108 million that A Quiet Place Part 2 has made so far. And this is a movie that I myself have not even seen yet and i really want to but what are your thoughts let me know in the comment section below if you like this video smash that like button light up that fire button do expect tons more reviews i just finished a uh, another japanese film which i'm probably going to butcher in its in its name but expect a review of zatao zataochi it's Zatoichi, you bum! Again, totally just butchered that name. But <laughs> if anyone's been watching the channel, you know exactly the name that I'm talking about. So I still got to do a review for that. Still need to do a review for Sword of Doom as well. And yeah, tons of other stuff that I'll be watching sometime today and this week. Got this Criterion Collection two-week trial, and I'll probably keep it for a month as well because there's all these old-school Japanese samurai films available on there. It'd be really cool to be sponsored by them because I would be glad to promote them based on all the stuff that they have available. So, hey, Criterion, uh, if you're looking for that, hit me up. But anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my June Patreon and subscribe star members Andrew Hoyle, Biffer de Hobbit, Brian P., Dion, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father. Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, 
and rather Teresa Martin is Miss Martin Muses now. Tina Bojan, Tina B., and Washington Madranda. Thank you all very much for being my supporters on Patreon. And to my subscribe star peeps, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, stand for John B., Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss slash the new number two, J. Ra, the beer guru, Nevanon G. Adams, and ZK Man. Thank you all very much for being my subscribe star members. And if you want your name shouted out at the every at the end of every video and live stream, please consider joining on Patreon or Subscribe Star. You also get access at other tiers to things like a bi-monthly podcast, bi-monthly, bi-weekly weekly twice a month podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger which is a lot of fun. There's also a tier in which you can join me once a month for the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where you all get to at that level, join me for discussions, talk about any projects that you might be working on, or just hang out and have a good time. It's a lot of fun. And also, too, for many of those levels, you also get access to a giveaway section on the Discord server where you get access to giveaways of things like 4K movies, digital codes, and tons of other stuff like that. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the links in the description and sign up over on Patreon and Subscribestar. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.